Is this a secret audition for being the female uh, oh, okay, choir okay. member? Alright, okay. Bird of the neo human race coming away. At the birth will we be come as rain. Let's do the more. Super happy about being here because back in 2012 we were planning on doing a new mm -hmm. store, mm -hmm. but we didn't get the visas in time, so we had to cancel the entire tour. We lost a, a lot of money, of and, 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 and all the fans and, and the support bands, you know. Wait, 2012, so four years ago. But this is not your first time touring in the US. This right? is the fifth. Yeah, oh. we, we were here two, two times in 2007, two times in 2000. So now it's been six years since we toured here. Oh wow! Everybody's so stoked. You know, I see all the message on Facebook, and it's just there, just such a loyal fan. Oh yeah, yeah. People are amazing. Right? Yeah. Um. And then this tour, there's a oops, as a square symmetry official member. Yeah. You have Benjamin. Yes. Can I bring bring him? Yes. In? Look at this guy. <laughs> This is a. Uh, he's very he, this cute. is a guy. He's from he's from England. Uh, he used to play with a band called Bloodshot Dawn. He's an uh, amazing guitar shredder. Uh, I was ac actually anxious for the longest time to actually ask him to be an official member because he's so good at playing. Because so. you've been playing as a session player, yeah, right? Yeah, Not yeah. the permanent. Mm -hmm. it, it puts me to shame every night. That's a blatant lie, but I will <laughs> take that blatant lie. How do you? How do you like to be an actual like, uh, It's amazing, it's crazy. Um, I mean, these a lot of people, if they know who I am, will know that Scar Symmetry are like, one of my favorite bands ever, and I've like, had a massive impact <laughs> on my playing and influence and stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was great playing, supporting these guys with my old band, Bloodshot Dawn. And then, when did you play? Yeah, yeah. Bloodshot Dawn played a couple of times in Japan, and uh, I mean we loved it. It's like the best place to play. Yeah, the crowds there are amazing. Um, but yeah, we supported these guys, and then we just kept in touch and I session for them a few times, mm -hmm. and then became a regular touring guitarist. And as of three days ago or something, I'm now a full time. Yeah, this the is band, so. your first. 
this show as a yeah, member. Yeah, 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 it's crazy. And he will be featured on the new album. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, singularly phase two. Yes. Yeah. When? That's actually one of my questions. You want to talk about now? Yeah. First, we, first we want, need to introduce our new bass player. Yes. So let's have a. a <laughs> no. <laughs> Take a hot seat. Sweating. Andreas. Yes. Hi. Let me Hi present there. to you this guy. Yeah. This this guy. His name is Andreas Holma. Yeah. Uh, he's our new bass player. He has he has the, he actually he used to play guitar for for a band called Hypocrisy, some like ten years ago. Then he, yeah. he did some brief stints as a live live player for Pain and Soilwork, very short stints, but still, but. Uh, even though he is like mostly known as a guitar player, he's actually a super amazing bass player, like the best bass player I've ever played with. So uh, yeah, it's an honor to, to welcome Andreas into the band. And we'll go way back, you know, since uh, 2006, uh, we toured together mm -hmm. on a tour called Neckbreakers. Neckbreakers? Yeah, Neckbreakers Ball. Ten, Ball? ten years ago. Yeah, Neckbreakers Balls, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> and soil work and, uh, and amorphous. Uh, they they yeah. were also on the tour, yeah. I, yeah. And, and and I think all three bands were sort of co-headlining. Yeah. And we no. were opening. It was our first tour with Scarcity. Wow. Oh, that, that neck yeah. break. <laughs> okay. Wow, so she's then you two are close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Fi finally the, the planets aligned and yeah. got to play together. Yeah, yeah. Right, all those like the Sweden artists are so close. You know, like uh, everybody knows everybody. Uh, right? we, we have similar taste in music as well. That's we right. Know, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. Blood yeah. brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, musical blood, blood brothers. So and I think that was what happened ten years ago when we toured together. We started talking about music and we just hit it off like, oh, you like that band and. We, we sort of kept, kept in touch during the years, yeah. and, and then uh, last year when, when uh, Kenneth left the band, uh, my, this was the, the obvious choice. <laughs> yes, of course. You were chosen. Yes. Andreas and Benjamin both are already starting recording. You finished recording? No. We still have some stuff to record. We're in the middle of it. Songwriting is done. Songwriting is done, we've recorded uh, almost all the vocals, all the drums, and lots of guitars, but it's still lots of things. I mean, our music is so, it's, it's so layered, yes, it's like it's not only one guitar, it's <laughs> six guitars, and then it's extra lead guitars, six and yes, it's like... Six layers? Yes. So, two, extra two of you? Yeah, it's like... What do you more, do for the line? It's like, the music is like a lasagna. It's like <laughs> different <laughs> layers, and every single thing is super fat. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, okay, that's very, very interesting to know all your idea, those like arrangements, or you know, like a bass guitar, they have their own chance to do their own thing, or yeah. you, how do you, uh, can you tell me about how to make one album? Okay, talk about this new singer too. Why are you uh, well, I'm going to talk about how to like doing an album. Okay. It's it's such a big, such a huge process. Sure, yeah. I can see that. I mean, not yeah. see, but and th this uh, this album is different from uh, well, it, it, it's uh, similar to the to phase one mm -hmm. uh, in that we had a storyline before we even started writing music. In, in the past, we wrote all the music, and then our drummer Henrik came up with the lyrics. For the music. Oh, he? Yeah, he writes all that thing and makes up all the concepts and everything. So this time, for this trilogy we're doing, mm -hmm. we had a, a storyline, a synopsis. We had an idea, like a broad idea, of what we were going to sing about. So then, I had that with them, some ideas of song titles and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then I wrote music to, to go along with that. And music means a melody. Uh, yeah, all the drums, the guitar riffs, the keyboards the melodies, the vocal range, the arrangements, mm -hmm. like everything. And then I did that and then Henrik wrote the actual lyrics to, to that. Wow. 
So your connection with other musicians, you are a friend with Free Kitchen Matthews? Yes, yes. You attended to his camp? Yeah, he, he invited me a few times. How do you like that? Uh, or what I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like a super crazy place. It's, it's out in the in the dark Swedish woods, like out in nowhere. It really, it really is. Uh, no, it's a, a like a scout cabin. Oh, okay. That he borrows a For couple of ye a couple of weeks every year, and then so it's it's a very uh, flat, like it's not a fancy place. It's just a couple of cabins. They set up in a room where it has its guitar and and they are like uh, 30, 40 people there, and they stay in the cabins or some some people stay in tents. There's a lake. Bathing and then their guitar lessons for 10 hours straight. Nice. And then he in invites uh, other musicians to come there and then, like, a guest. I nature. guess so. Yeah, so. so it's amazing. And, and everyone is super focused on music and guitar playing. Wow. So everyone has so many questions. I, I just have to sit there. I don't have to prepare anything. I just sit there and be like, hey, everyone. And they just <laughs> keep popping me questions and I end up. Talking for four hours. <laughs> what kind of question? I wanted to ask you that. Like, a, is there any like a most asked question in what? Uh, usually, but it, it starts out with uh, things like gear questions, like what kind of pick do you use, what kind of strings. Like that's the first thing that often comes to mind. But then uh, goes down to like, uh, how did you start your career? Mm. Like how, how how did you practice guitar when you were young? Mm. Talk about production techniques and some producer. Uh, yeah, things like that. And music theory. A lot of people are interested in that. What's the most like a surprised question? Like, a, oh, that's interesting. Is there any question? I don't know. I can't remember anything like, off the top of my head. But some people, you know, have super weird questions. <laughs> you know, because you are actively involved, like a Nam show, and also. Music instrument, like a festival type of thing in Germany. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They invite you to, you know, share yeah, yeah. Your knowledge. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, the stuff I've done at the, uh, at the trade shows has been, you know, like a uh, like a guest for the companies I work with. I'm endorsed by Strandberg Guitars. The red, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> beautiful. So I, they invite me so to, to come there and, and hang out and for a bit and talk to fans. Why your guitar doesn't have a... Headstock. Hey. <laughs> what uh, do you call? Headstock. Headstock. The same yeah. as a little... Yeah, with the tuners. Yes. Uh, How do you tune those things? I'm sorry. Actually, actually you, you tune the guitar down at, at the bridge. Oh, is that so you have, you have small tuners there. I have to check that out. Yeah, and the idea behind it is that uh, it's a lightweight instrument. So yes. you, you take the wood off you don't, don't have that weight, mm -hmm. the headstock, and then there's some uh, stuff carved out mm -hmm. in the body part as okay. well. And uh, it makes the guitar lighter, it makes it more balanced, it doesn't tip over it any, so, so it makes it much easier to wear and uh, plays beautifully. Oh, okay, so what about you, Benjamin? Your guitar is not uh, headless. Yeah. No, mine still has the headstock. Right. Uh, Mine is by a small company in the UK called Carillion Guitars. Carillion? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And there's one guy, Chris Delia, who makes all the guitars himself, all by hand. Um, yeah. All by hand? Yeah, all by hand. So he inlays all the design on the guitar neck, on the fretboards, done by hand. And, you know, guys, equal parts genius, equal parts insane because he just sits in his workshop all the time. Just so it's totally custom made for you? Yeah, yeah, me or whoever wants to order a guitar from him, it's all, he's really into doing everything by hand and sourcing all the material himself, so getting all the timbers for the guitar himself, um, and yeah, just making whatever guitar the customer wow. wants. So you brought it here? I, I yeah. have to check that. Yeah, so I've got one of them with me. I've got another two at home. But I've got the newest one with me. The, the new fancy shiny one, which hopefully <laughs> won't get damaged at all on this tour. But who knows, touch wood, it won't get damaged. Yeah. Oh, so...
So how many guitar you carry? Uh, three. Three. Yeah. Uh, usually I would have two, mm -hmm. but uh, Ben is only having one guitar, so I brought three, so we have two spares. So we only oh. play one guitar each. Okay. Uh, and we don't usually uh, change guitars during the set. It's only if, if we break a string or something. That's kind of rare. Out of two, never while you're playing. That uh, well, much? Well, we, we tune it every once in a while, you know, in between songs. Oh, we okay. Check oh. the tuning out. We, we, sure, don't, sure. we don't change the guitar. Oh, okay. Yes, so I have a um, guitar technique question like your camp guests. Uh, what was the reason you start doing hybrid picking? Uh, I'm not sure. It, I think it was just one of those things that just happened. From the beginning? I can't actually remember when I started doing it. It's probably, you know, at some point I picked up guitar, didn't have pick, so I just plucked oh. with my same fingers and then. Because I, ne I never played classical guitar. Really. So, you mean acoustic? Yeah, yeah. I never really played that. Uh, oh. So I, it was just something I started doing. And then I saw a guitar player who, who does mm -hmm. hybrid picking, but it was never something that I, you know, actively practiced and had exercise in. I never did that. I, di I did that for all the other techniques with sweep picking and alternate picking, all of, all of that I, uh -huh. I made exercise. But the hybrid thing is something that just happened, just happened and then like evolved on its own. So. Wow. Okay. It's, it's not like I'm doing something that's super difficult and compared to the guys who really does it well. Okay, and are uh, you planning to do a solo album? Yeah. I've been planning it for a long time. Long time. And? Yeah. And uh, I think life just continues <laughs> to happen. And, and uh, all my like scar symmetry and, and uh, the production work I do and some other bands I'm involved in. You know, yeah, you're doing a Kuiper. Yeah. Well, is that still going on? Yeah, we're working Are on a new album right now. Oh, so it's, okay. It's the fifth album that I'm, I'm playing on. Already? Yeah. You look so that also you are making some songs in that album. Uh, I, I, I don't write anything, but I play all the guitars. And What's the difference playing there and playing Sky Symmetry, the way you play? Totally, uh, you know, musically, a little bit Well, it's stronger. it's not a lot of heavy riffing in right. that, but it's, it's much more melodic. It's more, it's not a lot of guitar riffing. Mm. It's more melodies, solos, and uh, no, they're more rhythm oriented stuff. It's, it's with, with more clean tones. Or, or like okay. semi distorted, mm -hmm. and also I, I don't write any of the songs, but I have a lot of freedom creating my guitar parts. Oh, so, nice! So Hans, the keyboard player who writes all the songs, mm -hmm. he sent me the songs in in the demo in the demo demo version mm -hmm. where it has like programmed drums, programmed bass, and then different keyboard layers, and some of them are like uh, this electric piano change that for something similar on guitar. Oh. But I, okay. I, it's, it's up to me how, mm -hmm. I, how, I, how, how I want to interpret mm -hmm. it. And so it's, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's very different from Star Symmetry in that respect. Mm -hmm. So you already, you constantly have something, some kind of idea for Star Symmetry in your treasure box, tail box? Well, in, in my head, okay. there's always things growing. Okay, and when you talk to Kenrick, um, just the combination of you and him talk about the story and the crowd. Yeah. Wow, it's interesting. And Japan life. At some point. <laughs> Have yeah. you been to Japan? No, I haven't. I think so. No. We've had a few offers during the years that for different reasons never happened, like schedule conflicts sure. or 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 it, it would be too expensive for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's hard to get uh, to get good fees sure. when you, when you haven't been there. Like the promoters don't know right. who people show up. Mm -hmm. So so it hasn't worked out yet. But hopefully it will. Yeah. I, I don't even know if we if we have a strong following there or you think so. I recommend like a. Are you guys listening to us? Yes. <laughs> must check us out. It's very important <laughs> yeah. because I want to come to your place and, and play for you and for your friends and for your neighbors and for your parents and for your pets and, and everyone. <laughs> so. 
help us out, guys. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, we have a big festival, like Loud Park. Yeah, I heard yeah, about 30, it. 40, 40,000 people. I think really, it'll be a good fit yeah, yeah. too. Like and I heard, a, I heard that's a good place to start to do, like I breaking agree. the Yes, event. yes, because you get to expose that many... Do you know Loud Park, the, the guys who... who Creative men? I'll yeah. check, I'll check. Yeah, yeah oh. that's great. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one. But you, you talk to them. I, I will. Because you know Japanese, I don't. So. Oh, but they've been dealing with all. She will fix this for us. <laughs> See you in creative. <laughs> I feel responsible. Okay, Phil yes. Nilsson. So, you know, to introduce, I, I want you to introduce yourself more. And I have a question. What's your personality like with three words? Describe my, yourself. My first. Personality. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh, th those are the kinds of questions that are always the hardest. Really? Yeah. Well, uh, my impression would be very, very smart. You. Like a geniusly smart, okay. like a, what do you call IQ? Probably you're yeah, really high. No. Really? Or and reasonably. Reasonably. <laughs> I'm just That's a, my guess. Yes, but I'm just, I'm just a weird do. guy from Sweden <laughs> with a guitar. In the incredibly funny, the, I think those combination works really well for me. Yeah, <laughs> don't And you even cool. actually played guitar on your wedding. What did you play? Uh, those are very um, unique thing to do. Yeah, yeah. But well, I had some friends uh, be the like the house band. Okay. So they they played during the night, and uh, so then I, I brought my guitar and I jammed with them. Uh, I sang a, a song for my wife and uh, what? played some. Which song? <laughs> I did Faithfully by Journey. <laughs> Super cheesy. But oh! What can I do? That's actually a perfect song. Yeah, it sure. is. Wow. And then we did the uh, Frank Zappa songs. Mm. That's wow. <laughs> it's a little bit different. Uh -huh. Wait, so you listen to those uh, 80s rock? What's your favorite? Nick Kershaw. Nick Kershaw. He's a, a British uh, singer, songwriter. He had a lot of hits in the Okay. Yeah, he's, he's still active and puts out solo albums. It's probably my, my favorite. So that okay. Oh, okay. And so go back to your pers personality question. Yeah. Can you describe yourself? I'm, I'm not sure there's that much to talk about. <laughs> yes. Really? Yeah. You want to skip? Just a guitar dude. Guitar dude. From nowhere, Sweden. <laughs> All right. Uh, I like to play guitar. And sure. Cook some food and hang out oh with yeah, my wife. Oh yeah, I wanted to ask. Yeah. Do you love cooking? Yeah, I love cooking. It's, yes. It's my favorite pastime. It's probably the only thing that I like as much as I like music. And apart from that, I don't have anything else that I mm. really. You, yeah, you know, that's okay, like right? Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, in my like, uh, I want to cook and I want to play. And for me, it's like cooking is composing. You know what oh, I mean? Wow. You put you put together uh -huh. a song, you put together you a meal. Yeah. Like you have all these flavors and ingredients to, to, to choose from, and you put it together. So it's not an exact analogy, but there's, but there's I some. See that. Yeah, it's some like you, you get to be creative. What's your reason creation? Play, on the play. Oh, I don't know. I do lots of stuff me? all the time. Yeah, I love, me love to do yeah. meat. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I almost wanted to bring bacon. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I did the uh, bacon tacos. So instead, instead of the corn flour oh. the tacos, I, I put bacon on, on top of cups, and then I cook them, and then when you take off the bacon it's like a, a, a bacon <laughs> cup and then you can put that, that is creative yeah then put minced meat and, mm -hmm. and all like chipotle sauce and <laughs> stuff into it super, wow super yeah. yeah so that's out. very and nice. very very healthy <laughs> that's right okay. yeah. Yeah.
episode. Like uh, you can think when you're touring, you you have any episode you can share, like a very interesting or memorable. Uh, all the funniest uh, stories are, you know, the drunken stories. What? The people getting lost in, in Moscow or what? or in uh, Holland or in uh, your Serbia or. <laughs> Dangerous. It's very dangerous. Wait, people mean you ban people? Yes. One time, if one of us, I'm not going to mention which one, he was so drunk when we were in, in uh, Belgrade, Serbia. Yeah. Uh, he was so drunk that he was walking behind us and he fell down and rolled in underneath a car. And we couldn't find him. So you dropped off? So now we'll find him eventually. Okay. How do you manage to roll in under a car? Uh, there's okay. there's uh, lots of stories, but they are all. No. Know, okay, what about, on the, what about on the stage? Is there any like episode on the stage? Oh, uh, I don't know. Nothing, nothing really bad. You are very serious on the stage. No. I don't think so. Okay, but I'll just find like, out tonight. I don't think we like anything bad happened. Yeah. I had to Don't run to the bathroom one oh. time on stage. <laughs> That's good. But you had a beer. Yeah, I had one beer too All many. Right. So All I right. thought I was good to go, but three, four songs into the set, I was like, Lars, <laughs> after this you. song, <laughs> I need to run to the toilet. Cover for me. Lars, <laughs> how? <laughs> no, it's a, so I. I I'm running, this is, was a Bloodstock Festival, so there were 10,000 people in the audience. <laughs> and so I was running off stage and he just gave my guitar to the uh, oh, yeah. to tour, tour manager. And then I ran for the toilet. And then I could hear Lars in the microphone. He had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> like, and, and I could hear everyone share like... Uh, well, we, we've been hoping for a long time to get to come to Japan and, and play. Uh, we're so sorry that it hasn't happened yet, but we're we're gonna make our very best to, to make this happen next year. We'll release uh, the Singularity Phase Two, and uh, hopefully we'll come and play the entire album for you. <laughs> so let's do this. Hi, thank you, Teo-san. Um, during busy time doing this, yes. I checked my bucket list without thinking hard, but I really appreciate. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Be safe. Bye. Bye. Yeah, yeah.